Hey guys, oh, let's talk about ancient Greece here for a bit um, on this lovely video lecture of yours and looking at kind of sort of our broader questions where you can use details to piece together um, responses to larger questions. Kind of what are, we'll get into the Greek polis and then some of the common characteristics of those. Uh, and also eventually get to the differences between Athens and Sparta. We probably won't get to that one on here, but this will be a continuation that we'll get to um, back in class. So the title of on your um, schedule for this lecture was the Aegean Civilizations. And what we're going to do is um, talk about this area in, those are lovely circles that I just made, uh, in the Aegean Sea that uh, is here and getting to uh, discuss some of the details of the people who lived here and the culture that is going to evolve into ancient Greece. So the other day you know, we were talking about um, the Fertile Crescent, aka the, uh, well I drew my crescent backwards because I'm a terrible artist all the way around as we've seen, but that area of Mesopotamia which meant the land between rivers, the Euphrates and the Tigris up here, uh, the Fertile Crescent because of how well things grew, which enabled civilizations to thrive. Because if you're a civilization, the deal instead of being just a nomad is that you can be grounded uh, in one place. And um, from that area of the ancient Near East, because it's closer, it's nearer to the west than the far east is. Um, we see culture develop, and the first little place that I want to talk about is happening here on the island of Crete, and that will be the uh, Minoan civilization. So this Minoan civilization, um, as we just said, was based on the island, oh, that's a tiny little font, um, based on Crete. It's going to reach its heyday um, around the 2000 BC point. Remember, our years are going backwards. Super confusing. Um, BC, or as has become more politically correct the past few years that some textbooks have gone to BCE, um, that is where this civilization will develop and be around for around a thousand years. Um, and you can tell from some of their artwork things that were important to them. We see bulls here for one thing being very important to them. Um, another thing that you probably already know about this civilization um, would be the tale of the fateful uh, Minotaur. So this lovely minotaur um, thing, half bull, half man. Um, the tale behind the minotaur, so even you know, the idea for those of you born in, I think it's the month of May, or astrological sign of the Taurus, this, it, it's the bull constellation. You get that same idea here of uh, the bull appearing with the Taurus. The civilization gets its name from King Minos. So just to, not the most critical thing here, but since it's of interest. Uh, Minos was wanting control um, and competing against his brothers. He prayed to the god of the sea, Poseidon. Oops. Asked for Poseidon to grant him a beautiful white bull that he would then sacrifice to back to Poseidon, but he didn't. That's going to be trouble because Poseidon's going to have a bad temper. And then Poseidon ugh, 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 
in all sorts of Jerry Springer, Maury Povic type things um, Poseidon made, minus his wife, fall in love with this white bull. They had a little rendezvous together and out popped the Minotaur, uh, this half man, half bull creature that would be a threat to many people. Um, to contain the Minotaur, another word that's used kind of a lot in popular culture, um, or just in culture today, I guess not so much pop culture, but just to see how these connections continue, um, a labyrinth was built. It's kind of like um, an, a, a maze. It was an indoor way of containing um, the Minotaur so that he couldn't go wreck havoc on everything. Also, another thing, if you've ever heard of Icarus, um, the boy who flew too close to the sun. Uh, let's see. It was his dad who, uh, so this boy who had wings made of um, wax and feathers that his dad made, and he flew too close to the sun, and he died, so don't take too much of a risk, be reasonable, that kind of um, learning a uh, story uh, with a moral Icarus was supposedly the son of the guy who was very good at building things and making things and uh, who created the labyrinth for um, the Minotaur. So that is part of the uh, um, culture there. I can't get out. Abort. Stuck. There we go. Um, with involving the Minotaur. And if we, after I just did all that, go and just look at Google Earth here, um, here in the Aegean Sea, all around Greece, which we're getting to, but first down here on Crete, um, you can still see some of the remains of um, the Minoan civilization, and um, especially on, let's see if it'll show up with some of these pictures, or I can type it in directly. Yeah, someone's got to have a picture up here. And we go this um, form of palatial area of, that is not it, but um, here we go, of this Minoan territory, and this is the palace of King Mysos, uh, excuse me, Minos, at um, no so and so you can see the colors that they used uh, you know so if this stuff has been around for 4,000 years we've got buildings today in uh, the 2000s that are still that are easily crumbling away and deteriorating and so there you see the symbol of the bull again so important to them um, the uh, steps, the intricacies of, um, of the whole palace and not just something like a campground, but this, these were really sophisticated um, architects and, and you can get a, a sense of if this whole thing was still uh, around today, just how grand it um, would be. So these were good builders there in um, the Minoan uh, culture here on the island of Crete uh, below Greece. So something happened to the Minoans. How do I get back to my north south feet? They, they kind of vanish and um, their civilization will largely be sort of replaced from, by this group known as the Mycenaeans. Very hard to spell. It's not my fault when things are hard to spell. Um, also, this A-E-A-N is annoying too. Still going backwards with the years, but around 1600 to 1100 BC, BCE, um, the Mycenaeans start to flourish. And then we'll get to this uh, period here. This is a, a remnant of the Mycenaean um, funeral mass, but I'm going to cause you to think for a uh -oh, abort, abort, get out. Oh, in, sl in slideshow. We'll get there in a minute, because I want you to think 
just for uh, a minute about what happened to the culture at on Crete with the Minoans. If we've had, if you just look at it, you know, it can be one of these historical facts to say, okay, the Minoans are gone. They kind of disappear. That is true, but that could be a random Jeopardy fact. But what are the reasons, what, think about this, develop these critical thinking skills. What could lead this culture to just sort of vanish down south of the, uh, of, of the Aegean Sea here? pause, think, or I suppose you literally could press the pause button, so I'll just continue to talk. Kind of three different um, options. One, because this is an island, you know, it's contained. Does some sort of a plague uh, strike the island? And because people can't get away as easily, because it's going to be able to spread uh, more rapidly if it's something that's not native to the culture, so there's not as much of an immunity, is that going to wipe people out. Could, as a second idea, they have been invaded by another force, potentially the Mycenaeans or someone else, if they don't really have a place to escape to, if another invader comes, then that can permanently weaken um, their culture. Or three, something that's gained more um, uh, credibility, um, and, and popularity as a theory in recent years. I think it was PBS actually did a special on it a few years ago. A natural disaster. If a natural disaster strikes, especially with these islands, you know, if you think about the tsunami that hit um, Cambodia and places a few years ago, earthquake in Japan, it totally sh reshapes the landscape. So could something like a tsunami have hit here and you see all of these little islands, um, and there is some evidence of dirt from Crete being layered on some of these smaller islands um, around Crete. So if a natural disaster strikes, weakens the culture, kills so many people, um, then that also could have led to um, the decline of that civilization. And then the Mycenaeans are going to be more based on the um, what we're getting close to closer to with the Greek mainland. So instead of being on one of these little islands, the Mycenaean culture is going to take a lot of what's learned from the Minoan culture and go up here. And then something happens to the Mycenaeans around 1100 BC. And we get into this period of the Greek Dark Ages, not the Dark Ages of the Middle Ages that we'll be discussing a lot later, but um, this time where we just don't know much of what happened. There are fewer documentations. There's not a lot that's um, produced that's as impressive um, as some of the arts that would come later or some of the things that were known before. So this bleh period, but then we emerge again in this archaic period. We're not going to be, don't worry that every slide is going to have something with the word period and trying to keep these things straight like they were uh, geology time periods or something. But we get this archaic um, period where literacy returns, starts to thrive, Sculpture becomes much more lifelike. We go to things, of course, I would never be able to make anything like this to begin with, but you go from something that's very stoic um, to this idea of motion, more detail in the human body, and you've got this idea of a national identity in the Greek, Greece area known as Hellenism the national identity. That is um, a telling statement because Helen was said to be the most beautiful woman in the world. Okay? So they start to identify themselves and say, in this archaic period, we're so great, we're so much more advanced than everyone else that we pretty much may as well dub ourselves, nickname ourselves, after the most beautiful woman to live. 
one person who writes about Homer, uh, about Helen and other things happening that happened during that Dark Age period would be Homer. Um, not remotely to be confused with Homer Simpson. Homer is the author, he's not a writer, he's the author of the Iliad and the Odyssey. He's not a writer because he is blind. Um, but he, um, these are, if you've read these um, at all in North Carolina in high school, you know, we read the, the Odyssey or the abridged version. Uh, get that Minotaur thing off because Homer is not the Minotaur. Um, these are both, they're really long, so we don't even, it, it's kind of annoying to um, call them a poem in my mind, but they are epic poems. And these two epic poems um, are focused on the Trojan War. And uh, one of the kind of the cool things about the um, Trojan War and archaeology is people used to wonder whether it was an entirely fictional thing um, where it was uh, supposedly taking place with people from Troy. So the Trojans were from Troy. Um, and uh, over a hundred years ago, Troy was actually found. Um, if we go back to our Google Earth uh, and Apollo, it's in what's now Turkey. Um, let's see if that weird thing is going to be. Yeah. So this is the site of Troy, um, which is eh, right there on the, it was a Greek speaking, um, well, a, a a polis, we should say, when we get more to the idea of the polis, it was a Greek polis there. No pic. Oh, I took my pictures off. Hang on. Uh, wait. Now we're back. Where did Troy go? Now I lost my labels. Darn it. Troy. Someone's going to have a picture. Come on. There we go. Uh, to, well, this is, we'll talk about this Trojan horse. Um, in a bit, so that is kind of funny there, but uh, this region around Troy, okay, not the real Trojan horse. Oh, look, you can get up inside it. That's kind of fun. I want to go do that. Um, we'll talk about what this Trojan horse significance is. Uh, if you haven't heard of that before, okay, we'll get it. There are ideas. Let's look at this. Uh, so the idea of ancient... Um, Troy will go to the UNESCO site here, maybe. Uh, so some of the remnants of, of what's present there at Troy. And the Trojans, so those of you who like sports, um, the uh, Southern Cal, University of Southern California Trojans, um, involved in this tale here where the Trojans and the Greeks go to um, into combat.